distributed GNS3 and Dynamips using Amazon Web Services. If you're ready, let's move to the cloud. Our objective in this micro-nugget is to take a look at the possibilities of using somebody else's hardware to support our GNS3 slash Dynamips topology. And that's someone else specifically is Amazon Web Services. For example, you know, this is right there. You got it. That's a server and that's a cloud, which makes this a server on the cloud or near the cloud in any event. With Amazon Web Services, we could do this. We could say, I want to order up a server. Maybe you want Windows 2008 server and you want two gigs of RAM and some hard disks and a certain amount of IO and you click on a couple of buttons in Amazon Web Services and poof, this guy shows up, it's licensed, it's got DNS, it's on the internet, ready to go. Now, once we do that, we could then take GNS3 and Dynamips and completely install it there. Then from our PC right here, we can just remote desktop in whenever we want to use that GNS3 slash Dynamips topology. So if you need a bigger box that's available, you could get one for just pennies an hour right from Amazon Web Services. Another huge option is to divide and conquer. So we could have a host still on the cloud and we can maybe run the backend Dynamips that does the hardware emulation for the routers. That's where the real CPU processing takes place. And we can run GNS3 on our front end on our PC and then tell our PC, hey, you know what? The external hypervisor is reached at whatever the IP address or DNS name is of that server. And that way you can mix and match. So all the heavy lifting can be done by the CPU in the cloud and the GNS3, which takes virtually no front end processing at all, can be done right on your low powered laptop. What I'd like to share with you right now in this micro nugget is an example of that with this PC running GNS3, the graphical front end only, and having a few routers that are emulated through the hypervisor in the cloud. I went to Amazon Web Services. I said I would like to have a server to use. I clicked on what I wanted. I specified on a very minimal server. I clicked on go and it brought it up. So this indicator right here from Amazon Web Services says this server is running. There's the actual fully qualified domain name for it. And I just so happen to have an RDP remote desktop session to that device right here. So on this machine, I've got GNS3 and Dynamips fully installed, but what I want to do is I'm just going to enable Dynamips on this server. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and run dynamips.exe dash H and then this port 7200. What that tells this device is it's going to listen on port 7200 TCP for any request. Now the key is now I'm going to move this guy over here. So that's my cloud server. Let's bring in a local copy of GNS3 on my local machine. And this is my local PC with GNS3 running, but I want to show you something magical. If I go to edit and we go to iOS images and hypervisors, I've trained this machine that I want to go ahead and use. If I take a look at this one right here, I want to use this IP address of 54.242.205.239 and this iOS image sitting on that device as an external hypervisor. And it's my default for the 3700 series image for the 3725. So having done that, what happens, assuming we don't have any access control list or something else blocking the traffic, if I now launch a device here and bring over a router, for example, in the background, you'll notice that the hypervisor running on the AWS server is now listening to those requests. So let's bring out one more. There's our two and let's connect them together. And let's bring them up. So if I right click and I say start in the background, take a look. This is the AWS server now launching the Dynamips emulation for the hardware needed by that router. And the work isn't being done at my local computer. It's being done out at the remote server. And I want to bring a console up on this device because anytime you bring up a router and you don't open up a console and it's waiting for pressing enter from a user, it takes additional CPU. So even though the CPU isn't going to be impacted on my local PC, I don't want the back end AWS server to have, do extra work. So I'm going to right click and say bring up a console. It's going to launch Super Putty because I have Super Putty configured as my terminal emulation. And there we go. So if we do a show IP interface brief, should have nothing there. And we can configure it. So config T interface FA 0 slash 0 and no shutdown would be great. And IP address. We we'll use 10.0.0.1. Fantastic. That's one router up. Now let me minimize that out of the way and let's bring up a second router. In fact, I'm going to scooch this down just a little bit more so we can see all the details here. If we bring up this router, right click 
and say, I want to start that guy again in the background because the hypervisor is running up in the cloud. None of the CPU normally involved with either a misconfigured idle PC or having 20 or 30 routers is going to affect my local PC. The backend server has to do all that heavy work. So if we want to bring up a console port for this, we can as well by right clicking on it and say, I want to go to the console and that should add another tab into my super putty da, 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 da. and there's PC too. So let's verify that's working. So we'll do a config T interface FA zero slash zero and no shutdown and give an IP address as well. And let's give the IP address of 10.0.0.2. And we should be able to ping over to R1 in our topology. So in our topology, if we bring that up again for a moment, it's just R1 to R2. We'll go ahead and put the labels on there for the interfaces and they should be able to ping no problem. The first one's gonna time out due to ARP and that's quite normal. And then since the ARP is then resolved, we don't have that ARP issue on the next set of packets and we're good to go. I've had a lot of fun sharing this with you. If you have more interest in either GNS3 or Amazon Web Services, come see us in our CBT Nugget series on either of those topics, we'd love to have you. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.